Well, today, we are going to be looking at James chapter 1. Last week, we went through verse 4, so this week, we're picking up in verse 5. Hear now God's word to each of us. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, about a month ago, it was, it was relatively soon after we had moved, and I looked at my car, and I thought, car, I wonder if you need an oil change. We have driven thousands of miles around the country to move and to get settled and running back and forth to Home Depot more times than I could count. And I looked, and there's a button on my car you can push to say, car, do you need an oil change? So I push the button, and lo and behold, it pops up and says, why, yes. You have 10% of your oil left altogether out of 100, so you should probably get an oil change. It didn't say it, but a little thing popped up. It said, yes, get an oil change. And I said, mm, I'm kind of busy. I have kind of a lot going on. I bet it's fine. So I drove on for another week or so, and then this little light popped up, and it was a wrench, a little orange wrench lit up on my dashboard. And then the oil light popped up again, and the car was telling me, remember how you asked if I needed an oil change? I do. I need one right now. And I thought, hmm, kind of got a lot going on. That sounds like it's going to take quite a bit of my day. I bet it's fine. Kept driving. Well, now we're at the day before school starting. And any of you that have sent children to school know that day before school starts is chaos. I had a million stores to go to. We had to get markers from here and folders from here, lay out the clothes, do the laundry, pack the lunches. And I get my car and I turn it on, and now the little wrench is flashing. <laughs> and I thought, you were trying to tell me something, but <laughs> I don't have time for this. That's too much work. And off I went to go buy school supplies, driving down the street. We got uh, several miles from home in the, middle, uh, in the middle of town, and all of a sudden, not one light, but all the lights have come on on the dashboard of my car. I truly, I've never seen it do this. It was like a Christmas tree, like everything turned on, including the light that usually it lights up like a D if you're in drive, an N if you're in neutral, now all of them were flashing, but I'm still moving. And I thought, I feel like I need an oil change. Because <laughs> lo and behold, the car stalls on the side of the road. The car was all done. And you know, it, it was one of those times when I realized if I ask the car what I should do, and it offers me an answer, maybe I should listen. Maybe when we ask for an answer, we should listen. But we do this all the time. We ask for a recipe. We ask for directions. We ask for advice. And we get it. Someone says, here is what you should do. Here is my wisdom for you. And we, and we listen, and especially if it's hard, or especially if it asks something of us we'd rather not do, I don't know about you, but I find myself thinking, mm, I mean, really? Maybe I'll just do this other thing instead. Sounds like really good wisdom, but I think I'm going to go over here and do what I wanted to do anyway. And it makes us wonder, why did we ask to begin with? But what about when we're asking God? What about when we're going to God and saying, God, I need wisdom and that's what brings us to our passage for today. We're going to walk through it. In verse 5, it says, if any of you is lacking. And I almost think James is sort of laughing with us. Is anyone lacking? Of course we're lacking. If any of you is lacking in wisdom. Now we're going to go over here, and we're going to talk about wisdom for a second. Because we misunderstand this word quite a bit. 
we hear wisdom and sometimes we're tempted to substitute knowledge. Now, I know we have access to all the knowledge in the world. We can go on Google and find out anything we want. There is unlimited information out there for us. And this is not to say that we don't try and build our intellect or our education. But that kind of knowledge is not what James is talking about here. The word for wisdom in the Greek in this passage is used over and over again in the scriptures. And it's so important that more often than not, it's described as a person. Wisdom will be described as walking around, getting involved in our lives. We don't see that with any other trait. Love, kindness, joy, peace, those are all great, but wisdom walks around in our lives and gets involved. Wisdom, it turns out, is critical for our walk with God. But why? Why is wisdom the one that James puts all the way up here? James does that because wisdom is not just what we know. Wisdom is when we see ourselves in relation to God. Wisdom is when we see ourselves in relation to God. It's when we know we're human and God is God. It's when we can look at the world and see it just for a moment like God does. So wisdom isn't what we know, it's seeing ourselves and our relationship to God. And our passage says if we ask for that, God will give to us generously and ungrudgingly. I don't know, I know I don't always give generously and ungrudgingly. We give and we expect a thank you card, or we give and we expect an appropriate amount of a response. God just gives. We ask God for wisdom, and God says, here's all of it. Here's everything you're asking to. No strings attached, no begrudgingness, just gives. But, verse 6 starts with but. Whenever you hear that in scripture, you should pay attention, right? He's like, God gives to you, but, so we listen, but, ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed in the wind, the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Okay, yikes. (laughs) We hear that word and we think, I've had doubt, and James says, I'm not going to receive anything from the Lord. All right, we talked about wisdom over here. We'll bring doubt over here for a second. Another sidebar. Doubt is also not what we think it is. The doubt in James today is not doubt in God's existence. We know that we're going to have doubt. If you've believed in God for a minute, 10 seconds of that, you probably found yourself thinking, really? Is it really true? Doubt is a part of our walk of faith. It means we're wrestling and trying to make sure we really believe it. The doubt that James is talking about is not doubt in the existence of God. It is doubt in God's trustworthiness. It's when we go to God and we ask what we should do, we ask for wisdom, and God provides an answer. And we think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. (laughs) I don't know if that's really what I should do, God. I don't know if I can really trust you. Now, remember, wisdom was knowing that God is God and we are us. So if we're doubting when we ask for God's wisdom, we're saying, I know that you said that, God, but I kind of think I know better. And then we end up stalled on the side of the road with no school supplies and all our warning lights on because we didn't Submit to God's word. It talks about this when it talks about us being tossed about like a wave in the sea. God provides an answer and we're just looking every other direction because the answer we got maybe wasn't what we wanted to hear. But friends, this is where the rubber meets the road for us. If we ask for God's wisdom, we have to be willing to submit 
to it. If we ask for God's wisdom, we have to submit to it, even if it's hard, even if it's not the answer we were hoping for, even and especially when it asks something of us. Scriptures tell us that the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord, And that means for us that the beginning of being wise is knowing God is God, we are us. God is in control, we are not. God is sovereign and we are human. So when we ask for wisdom, we have to submit to him. Maybe you have a relationship in your life and you've been praying, God, I need wisdom in this relationship. I feel like it's not what I'd like it to be in my marriage or my my children or my friends. Maybe God's come back to you and said, you need to go apologize in that relationship. You need to swallow your pride and admit you were wrong. And we go, I don't know. That sounds uncomfortable. (laughs) But if we want God's wisdom, we have to submit to it. Maybe you're looking at your life and you're saying, I just feel like my life is a mess. God, give me your wisdom. How do I get on track? How do I get where I want to be? But what if when you ask, God comes back to you and says, that's because there's this sin there. That's because there's this behavior, this thing that you need to deal with. You need to root it out and start living more like Jesus. And we think, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) That sounds like a lot of work. Or maybe it's something about our job or our life's direction, and we pray for wisdom, and God says, go there. And we say, I don't want to. When we ask, God's going to give it. But we have to submit to it when he does. Now, if you're like me, I read these things, and I think, okay, What if I say, okay, God, I'm going to submit to it, but how do I get that wisdom? We all know those spiritual giants who can just kind of do like this, and they receive a word from the Lord, and that is awesome. And find those people and latch on to them, because they are listening to God. But for a lot of us, maybe once or twice we've heard God's voice in our spirit But the rest of the time, we're just kind of doing the best we can. So how do we find wisdom? So we're going to try and make this really practical. The first thing you do is you pray. And you say, God, I need wisdom in this. I need wisdom in my relationships. I need wisdom in my job. I need wisdom in my life. And maybe God will speak in that moment. But if you're still struggling, then you can do a few other things. It doesn't stop there. Get your Bible. And this gets real practical. Google, (laughs) what does the Bible say about relationships? And it will give you a list of verses. Read those. Pray on them. Listen for God to speak. Find someone in your life who's one of those spiritual giants, one of those people who hears God speak and grab coffee with them and say, I'm going to take a risk and tell you I'm struggling with this. What wisdom would you have about that? And they'll share with you. So we take time to pray. We take time in the word. We listen to the church. And then James says, in faith, we submit to it. We hear what God's saying, and we follow God wherever that goes. And we don't do that alone. We're here this morning because we're the body of Christ. And we can't go off by ourselves and try and figure out what God's doing. We do that together. We come here to help each other one piece at a time assemble our lives to look more like Christ. And that's what I'd like us to ask to do this week. Take some time this week. Talk to somebody that you trust. Pray about something in your life that's just not working. And ask God for wisdom. And I think will be surprised by their response. And then the hard part comes because we follow God into whatever's next. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we take a risk this morning and we ask for wisdom. 
It sounds non-threatening, it sounds easy, but we know it can turn our lives upside down. Help us to hear your voice in our spirit. Help us to hear your voice in the Bible. And help us to hear your voice in one another. That we would know first, God, what you're trying to teach us. And then, God, give us the courage to respond. May each of us this week be attentive to your voice in our lives and the wisdom that you give generously to all who ask and trust. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen.